Um, so hi, I'm Orion, I'm a postdoc in the Louisville Aspects University. And as you might know, Canada has around 20% of global surface freshwater, possessing one of the largest supplies of freshwater in the world. However, freshwater ecosystems face big environmental issues, such as invasive species, pollution, degradation, and the decline of local species. But how do we monitor such large and various systems? All our projects are based on the fact that organisms leave their DNA in the water. So based on small volumes of water, it is possible to know which species are present in the lakes and marshlands without seeing the individuals, just because each species has his, its own barcode. So capturing the DNA and identifying all the species in the environment is called DNA metabarcoding. We sample the water, we filtrate it, and we extract DNA from it. So, so right now we are looking for tools to identify the whole biodiversity in water bodies, fish, mollusk, insects, uh, plants, algae, mammal birds, everything. And working on the cube's land base is an amazing opportunity to have access to high level of biodiversity and various uh, water bodies in size, but also um, in varieties such as marshlands, uh, big lakes. And the samples we took at Cures, we ran through our protocol and enables in the future to monitor um, aquatic biodiversity. Hi, my name is Alan. I'm a first year PhD student supervised by Dr. Stephen Lockheed and Dr. Yusheng Wang. Uh, I'm broadly interested in the dispersal of invasive species with a specific focus on mollusks, phytoplankton, and um, algal blooms. So for mollusks, this would be zebra mussels, quagga mussels, and um, mystery snails. Um, recently, we've been sampling the cubes land base, um, so the various marshes and the lakes on, in cubes. So for each, um, lake we've been collecting water samples and then as Orion has said uh, we've been filtering them and extracting DNA from them to test for various species and with this current data set we hope to be testing our methods and doing a broad biodiversity survey of the land base. Um, in the future I hope to use this data set and other samples we collect from cubes in the Rito watershed um, to test for invasive species dispersal and their impact on phytoplankton diversity and algal blooms. Um, other things I've been working on include a citizen science program for environmental DNA and um, water sampling using drones. Hi, I'm Stafford Miracle. I'm a master's student in the Lougheed Lab at Queen's University. I am using eDNA metabarcoding alongside traditional um, ecological knowledge to assess uh, freshwater ecosystem health through the fish populations. I've been doing most of this work with the River Institute in Cornwall, and the majority of my work is going to be through the St. Lawrence, but also up into the Rideau Canal system. Um, the second part of my project will be looking at sedimentary DNA, so collecting DNA through the time, through time to look at fish populations over a long time period and see how they've changed. Hi, I'm Wen Shi. I'm uh, finishing up as a PhD student in Dr. Lockheed's lab. My current project uh, was, uh, was using environmental DNA denial technique, as Ari and others mentioned, to uh, understand better understand the distributions of freshwater, tur freshwater turtles in southern Ontario. There are two species I'm working on. Uh, first one is northern lab turtles, where I look at their winter hibernation size using the eDNA. And the other one was the common max turtle, which is the turtle people normally ignore uh, due to their small size and cryptic lifestyle. I'm also using environment DNA to map their distribution across uh, southern Ontario to understand their uh, northern range limits in this area. Hello, everyone. My name is Ying Chen. I'm a PhD student in Dr. Lockheed's lab. Um, similar as Wen Shi's project, I'm also using environmental DNA to detect the uh, presence or absence of a uh, uh, small uh, frog species called uh, trillion chorus frog. Um, it is uh, an elusive species and we can only herd them and found them during their breeding season. Um, environmental DNA opens up a larger window for us to detect them uh, when there were 
tadpoles in the marshlands. I am also looking at the meta population of chorus frogs um, at Cubes landscape. Uh, it is because chorus frogs are a species of concern and their populations are declining greatly. So to infer how to protect and restore wetland habitats, I'm studying how local populations connect with each other on the intact landscape at like uh, Cubes landscape. And so during spring, I am going to, I went to the marshlands, uh, capture uh, the individual frogs and clip their toes and extract DNA from it to infer uh, gene flow between populations as well as uh, genetic divergence between populations. So my name's Arjun from Dr. Stephen Lougheed's lab in the biology department at Queens. Uh, so for my project, I'm trying to determine if northern water snakes on Maine Duck Island, which is a little island in eastern Lake Ontario, about 30 kilometers from Kingston, uh, to see whether they are genetically differentiated from water snakes on the mainland. A genetically distinct population can be classified as a distinct subspecies and may have their own conservation status and protection separate from the rest of their species because their conservation needs can be very localized. Uh, there is one known island subspecies of water snake, the Lake Erie water snake, which lives on the Lake Erie archipelago in southwestern Lake Erie. This subspecies is not only genetically differentiated from mainland populations, but a lot of individuals have a unique gray coloration that probably evolved as camouflage from predators on the limestone shores of the Lake Erie Islands. So for my project examining genetic differentiation between Maine Duck Island water snakes and mainland water snakes, Parks Canada collected some blood samples from Maine Duck Island and we also collected mainland water snake samples from several mainland sites, including the Cubes Elbow Lake property. And later this summer, I might collect some more samples from the Cubes properties. Then DNA was extracted and sequenced. Uh, you can think of DNA as being just a combination of letters and each species or subspecies has its own combination of letters, kind of like a barcode. Uh, sequencing is just reading these letters, like scanning a barcode. Uh, it lets you look for differences between the DNA of several populations, so for my project, the island and mainland populations, and large numbers of differences in DNA sequences can indicate that the populations don't mix. So right now I'm processing the sequence data, and once that's done, I'll run analyses to cluster the samples based on the similarities between their DNA sequences. So I expect to find two genetic clusters, one for Maine Duck Island and one for the mainland sites. If Maine Duck Island water snakes are found to be genetically distinct from mainland populations, then they might be classified as a distinct conservation unit and receive a conservation status assessment. And if that were to occur, they would uh, come under the management of Thousand Islands National Park. Uh, the study might also set the stage for future work looking for differences in physical traits between Maine Duck Island water snakes and mainland water snakes.